Hello, in this video, I'm gonna give you an update on the hot, hot real estate market here in Montenegro. I've been getting tons of questions and I thought, you know what, we're gonna do a bit of a different video. I'm gonna bring in an expert to be able to answer those questions. In fact, seven key questions that you've been asking. Uh, you know, this is a hot market. Did you miss the opportunity? Is it too late? What's been going on? Well, you know, one thing I like to say is follow the money. When I see lots of millionaires coming in and bringing in their money, when I see luxury developments, coming in, you know, you got the Buddha bar, got Nikki Beach, got golf course being built with residences. And I say, wow, you know what? This looks super interesting, but is it too late? Can you buy if you're a foreigner? You know, how is the system, etc. So many questions. So we're going to answer some of the most common questions, everything you need to know about investing, or at least all the questions that I've been receiving since we started investing in building projects here. We have lux beautiful luxury multi-boutique villa up in Zabrze, another beautiful uh, luxury uh, architect home in Krasici. So, but we've been getting a lot of questions. So these are the seven critical questions that we're going to try to answer. And I'm going to ask Peter, and actually Peter is going to be giving his point of view. First question is, why are so many international real estate investors investing in Montenegro. Question number two, I'm going to ask him to give us a helicopter view, like the 10 years and three years, what's been happening in Montenegro. So we kind of get a sense, super important when you're looking at investing in real estate, is not just look at the now, but get the broader view. Question number three, what are the hottest areas? What are people buying? Get a sense, what's happening? Question number four, critical one, how strong is the legal and title system? And what are the risks? Question number five, talking about risks. Are there any scams or other issues that investors should be aware of? This is a critical one. Make sure you listen through. Question number six, can foreign buyers, foreigners buy easily in Montenegro? And question number seven, what about residency permits? Um, what are the options if someone buys an apartment or builds a house or if they set up their company? What can be done? So critical points uh, with an expert, Peter. So it's gonna be a conversation. We're gonna be right here at beautiful Dobrota. And uh, hopefully I can answer all your questions in this video. So if you're ready, here we go. All right, well, super excited to be here with Peter back in Montenegro, beautiful Dobrota here. And um, well, I'm gonna ask him some questions. I have seven questions. But before I start, maybe Peter, just a little bit about you, how long you've been here, how long you've been doing real estate. Sure, and I was uh, looking around the world and really I couldn't think of anywhere better. You know, with such kind of opportunities, the potential in Montenegro, how it's gonna develop and, and so on. I did a lot of research before I came to Montenegro and uh, 17 or now, this is my 18th year, uh, over 17 years later, I'm still thinking, so, this is still this is the place. Still the place, it's still got great opportunities, it's got a, still got a long way to go, it's developed immensely uh, since I've been here, and um, I think that it still has a set, the potential to just basically the momentum to, to carry on for the next 17, 18 years anyway. So I, I, I can't see this, this place stopping. It's, um, it's the, the network effect. Yeah. More and more people hear about the place, they discover it, they like it, and Absolutely. they come and buy. Yeah, so. yeah, it's interesting because I've also researched, you know, mm -hmm. I do real estate different parts in Costa Rica, you know, Italy, and I spend a lot of time trying to say, where is there a place that's beautiful, mm. undervalued, and this was, you know, just only a couple of years ago, and I still actually think the prices are low when I compare to even just neighboring Croatia. Like yeah. when you compare, and, and what I like to say, what I've seen here, and in my intro, I kind of talked about, like, is it too late? This is a hot, hot market. And I kind of asked the question. Now, of course, yeah. it's speculation, but, but um, when I compare, I see here prices, what I would call from the past, prices from today, and prices from the future. Those who see where it can go, yep. they're trying to sell, they're selling at a price which is European prices. Mm -hmm. And right next to it, you have someone who's selling at yesterday. So you still have these crazy deals. Yep. And Peter often on, 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 you know, that he comes up, I, every so often I'm like, that's an amazing deal you found, sure, right? Sure. You find, uh, so, um, no, it, uh, amazing. So maybe we'll kick straight off with question number one, okay. which is linked to that, okay. which is, um, why are there so many international investors in real estate coming into Montenegro? I think I touched on it before. Uh, it's the same reason as it was 18 years ago. It's a, it's a new, relatively undiscovered place. Uh, I think actually when you people have, have uh, discovered Montenegro, 
they understand the, the beauty. I mean, I, I came here because when I was younger, in my 20s, I traveled around the world and I, like, I knew of all these kind of UNESCO protected places, uh, Cartagena and, and so on and so forth. And uh, when I did my research about Montenegro, it's like, oh my God, this is up there with the, some of the best places in the world. So, and when you compare it with prices, let's say in the south of France or the kind of better parts of, you know, like a Sardinia or, or Corsica and so on, it's still very, very expensive, but it has that very uh, uh, niche kind of market appeal. I mean, you can't see in the area, maybe, maybe Nathan will do some B-roll or something, but it, will. we're surrounded by palaces yeah. here, or what they call palaces, they're kind of palazzo, or in England we call them maybe manor houses and things, so the large uh, estates. Uh, it's just a phenomenal, beautiful place. Yeah, it was uh, uh, run by the Austro-Hungarian. So again, like I said, you have these Austro-Hungarian palaces and great architecture in the, in the vicinity. Um, it's one interesting fact. I'm not sure. Uh, it's maybe try not to go too much off piece, but one interesting thing about Montenegro is that some of the top hotel chains in the world were top top like uh, one and only Amman Resorts, the Region Hotels and so on they had their first hotel in Europe in Montenegro uh, now these guys they're normally doing business plans for 30, 50, 100 years so if they decide to come to Montenegro before the south of France or Italy or London or something th there's a reason for it because they also understand that their clientele that are spending a thousand to five or ten thousand uh, dollars a night for a room. This is the kind of place that they want to be. So, and it has all the kind of uh, uh, attractions. It's kind of gained the critical mass for the for the luxury tourism. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to bounce on that and add a question that wasn't planned, sure. but. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a, one person who contacted me and made, made a joke. He said, in one of my videos, I used the, the term 50 times. It was absolutely beautiful. Oh, right. Fifth, in one video. And so to say, just the nature here and, you know, what, what's around us and me traveling around the country. It's a small country. Um, if you just want to say if, uh, shortly on, on taxes, because it's also interesting from a tax mm -hmm. standpoint, and some international investors have not only invested here, mm -hmm. but either moved themselves here or based themselves yep. out of here. So maybe just briefly on that. The taxes are, I'm not fully up to, up to speed because they did change the, the taxes in, I think it was January this year. Uh, but roughly you're paying 15% uh, on your international income. Um, so this That's one five, not 15. one five, not five zero. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's fifteen percent. <laughs> so I was quite surprised when we had uh, met kind of several Swiss investors coming here. I thought, well, uh, surely Switzerland's a tax haven. They're like, no, 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 not for private individuals. Maybe for banks, but uh, but for individuals, it's not so great. So um, it's still got great uh, tax advantages. Uh, there's. Um, the, the taxes are quite low on the property themselves. So, for example, I know in the UK we have what we'll call council tax or poll tax or, or so on. Uh, and that would be maybe four or five times the amount that you pay in Montenegro. Maybe, maybe ten, actually, because the, the, the annual property tax is normally based on a quarter of a tenth of the value uh, of the property per annum. So, let's say the property is 100,000 in value quarter of a percent will be 250 euros so you'd be paying 250 euros per annum uh, for the for the property tax and I know in the States for example yeah. it's up to two percent of the yeah. value uh, per annum so it's eight times higher so. yeah no, that's huge yeah I'm just gonna refill the water one break Let me do that first my next question is if you take a bit the helicopter view right yep. because very often um, you know people investing in real estate they tend to say look at the market now mm -hmm. but like you said, the hotel chains, they have a vision, right? Yeah. And I liked what you say because I looked at, you know, um, you know, Nikki Beach, they have where? Mykonos, they have Ibiza. It's not like they have hundreds. And when they come here, it's not a, just yeah. a, a quick split decision. They're in it for the long term. But if we look at the last 10 years, what, what, what has changed? What, what, what has happened here in terms of the country, the opportunities, the level of luxury? What, what have you seen? Sure. Um... Names, you have uh, uh, hotel chains like Nikki Beach, you have uh, the one and only that's come here, again, first in Europe. They have another first in, in the world, actually, which is uh, at Puerto Montenegro, the one and only will have a new brand, which is called Ciro or Ciro. 
Uh, that was done in conjunction with, I think, 23 Olympic athletes. So it's going to be an amazing hotel with, uh, I think, a health spa, kind of gym, uh, probably kind of lots of uh, physiotherapy and kind of all the medical amazing. things attached to that. So that'll be the first in the world in, in, uh, in Montenegro. So it's attracting more and more of that uh, type of uh, provider and also clientele. So it used to be, for example, Porto Montenegro came and it kind of spearheaded the, uh, the, the luxury. I mean, they, were, they kind of started around about 2008. Uh, they became really quite established around about 2010 or 12. Uh, but certainly in the last 10 years he's talking, so Porto has developed, it's got the critical mass. So instead of the people on the super yachts just coming here and having a look at it, now they're getting off the boats and then they're enjoying the place and they're looking around and these, these are billionaires, you know, so yeah. it's the likes of Tom Cruise and Jeff Bezos and, and uh, I saw the, who's the guy with uh, Jordan? Michael Jordan had his plane over here. So yeah, it's uh, attracts some really kind of high rollers here. And it's interesting because, so if you tell a little bit the story of Puerto Montenegro, the investors who had the vision, mm -hmm. kind of what happened, um, maybe just briefly uh, on, on, on that piece of sure. the origin of Puerto Montenegro. The origin was, it was a naval uh, shipyard. Uh, I think uh, the way I tell the story is that um, uh, the president at the time, Milo Dukanovic, invited uh, Peter Monk over and uh, Peter Monk, uh, being a super yacht owner and his friends obviously have their own super yachts. Uh, they understand or understood the problems at that time of actually kind of uh, burting their, their super yachts. So I, I liken it to, well, uh, if you open up a car park in London, it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys open up a car park for boats in the Mediterranean, the Adriatic parts of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and it just works because there's just such a high demand. But not only that, when they started their concert, they the, the kind of the founders and the initial kind of workers and directors and so on, they then flew around the world. They went to all of the best uh, marinas in the world and they went, right, this one in Thailand is excellent because of this. This one in Australia is fantastic because of this. This one over in South of France is excellent because of that. They took all the best attributes of every single uh, luxury marina in the world and then put it together in Puerto Montenegro, which is why I think it's the only platinum rated uh, marina in the world for, for super yachts. You know, so so it's, it has the highest uh, standards. So with that standard comes the super yachts, it comes a, the luxury living. You actually have, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice mix. You have the lifestyle, lots of great restaurants and cafes and, and, and lots of things. Yeah. So it, it's just, just really works. And Porto Montenegro is into that. So it kind of segues very, very nicely between the actual uh, the, the, the town of Tivat and the promenade there, and then you start to get into this kind of luxury area. And th there's there's no uh, blurred lines, it's just one to the other. Yeah, I, and I, just on that point, because one of the things I liked is because, so because you have the city, there's people year-round, right? It's not like some of these developments where from June or May to September, and then it's dead yeah. because you have a city. I've come off season. Of course, there's more people in the summer, but, yeah. and, and maybe to the comment on, uh, you know, the people who are coming, just the, the quality, like how it's been done, the level. Mm -hmm. I, I like to say it's like maybe some of the most beautiful places you know, long time ago that were built, but you yeah. go to South of France, you go to Monte Carlo, etc. It kind of feels old. You know, you go yeah. to the casinos. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't feel, although it's, you know, high-end luxury, but it doesn't feel here. It's just all new. It's, 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 it's brilliant. So I, I think that it's interesting because I, I make the comparison with, between uh, Montenegro and uh, Croatia and Dubrovnik. And Dubrovnik has still got this kind of gingham check tablecloths and they're still serving yeah, like mediocre pizza and uh, overpriced and kind of uh, uh, very I don't know, nonchalant service. Whereas everything in Montenegro is new, so sort of the latest design, highest quality. That's the, the people that they're trying to attract. They're very, very keen service, and uh, it's great. Yeah, you know, for for luxury tourism, I think uh, Montenegro is leaps and bounds above Croatia, uh, especially the kind of the southern part uh, in terms of what's on offer. Not only that but you also have so much to do in, in such a small area. You know, so we're in Dobrito, it's uh, Sveti Stasia, where I live, uh, but we're 25 minutes away from Porto Montenegro, we're an hour away from Herzegnovi, we're 35 minutes away from Budva, we're 30 minutes from Plavi Horizonti Beach and 30 minutes from Lushitsa, Lushitsa Bay and so on. So absolutely. all of a sudden you're 10, 20, 30 minutes away from lots of great places. So. Oh no, absolutely. All right, so I know we could keep going on, but I'm gonna yep. go to next question. So. 
What are the hottest areas? What are you seeing people buying? Like what, what is, what's been happening? Uh, cut to the chase, the, the hottest area is Tibet. Uh, that's probably as a result of uh, how uh, Puerto Montenegro has grown so dynamically and again on the lifestyle side of things. So, so essentially a lot of people like to be based in Tibet, so they're, they're buying there and also the Airbnbs are going there and so on. Uh, last year I would say the prices probably rose by about 20% at least in, 20. in, in, uh, in Tibet area. Uh, where we are now, uh, it's the kind of more historical side of the, the bay, the Boca Kotorska, which is the, that's the kind of collective name of the, the Bay of uh, Kotor. Um, so you have these kind of old palaces and UNESCO uh, towns of uh, Kotor and Peras behind me. You've got a beautiful place over here called uh, Luta. So some of the high-end buyers are coming over here, so that they're rather buying uh, palaces or frontline cottages. But they, you're talking one, two, three, four, five million uh, for those. Um, and but going back to Tibet, for example, I think people like to use Tibet as a base, whether the owners or holiday makers, because then they can go to all the beaches that they want to, do all the sightseeing that they want to, get back to Tibet, have a shower, go out. glass of wine, go out, you know, walk to, yeah, you know, because the traffic, like any other kind of very popular place, the traffic is starting to, to get a little bit kind of uh, dense That's in the true. summer. So it's so certainly Tibet, Kotor is yeah, will always do well because of its kind of pedigree. Um, interesting, uh, Hertig Novi was starting to do well, but Hertig Novi is a little bit detached from this kind of bay where there's so much going on. Um, uh, Lustritzer uh, was very, very popular, but I think a lot of things that were popular were there with the stone cottages to, to renovate. Yeah. They're pretty much sold out, so it's very difficult to find that kind of property. And the planning has changed there. So you could buy land with planning permission, so just, just be wary, viewer, uh, if you're looking at buying land, just make sure that it has got the planning and so on and so forth. Uh, the sellers may want to convince you that it has, and they may be thinking that they're right, but, but things have changed a few years ago, so, so just double check all the planning. And you can get something which is called a, a UTUs, which are urban technical conditions, which uh, it's a prescriptive thing to tell you exactly what you can build in. Uh, you, you know all this yourself because you've been through yeah. the building process. <laughs> right. But uh, it will tell you exactly there. Uh, that normally takes a month, but there's a quicker way uh, to get the, over the, the very vague, uh, sorry, basic information. It's something called the Uvrenyu Namini, and that will just tell you yes, you can build there, and you can build at a ratio of. Uh, 80% you know, overall and so on. So well, that, um, That's actually a perfect segue because the next question I want to ask Peter was um, with regards, and this is something on my experience going around, it's kind of one of the biggest fears is how strong is the title system? How strong is the legal system? How much risk is there? And so, and you kind of touched on it here with the UTUs, but I just want to sure. elaborate a bit. The uh, Montenegro switched over to the notary system uh, several years ago. Uh, so you actually have a notary that has their own kind of responsibility and so they want to make sure that everything is absolutely 100% uh, uh, correct. You have the title deeds, which is something called the List Nepokretnosti. Uh, that's live uh, on the land registry in the Kadashta. Uh, the uh, notaries, I believe, actually have a feed so they can tell um, uh, exactly that something's not been sold, there's no contract against it. As soon as you uh, go to a contract in the notary, uh, then that notary will send the contract and will actually inform the land registry that there's uh, a sale in process. So then that will be registered. So everything is quite safe. It, when I got here, uh, the contracts were done in the courts. Uh, I thought that was quite a safe place, but then I later found out that basically all the court is doing is saying, we saw two people sign a piece of paper. That's, that's all it was, you know, the, the, whether the contract is good or bad or whatever it may be. And also what would happen then is that the title deeds could be old and then you could have somebody selling that property in uh, one place and a couple of days later selling it in somewhere else. So there have been problems in the past. Uh, I haven't heard of many problems for a long time, but certainly you know, 18, yeah. 17, 18 years ago there were past. And, and maybe that's something to, to, to go back to you because I remember uh, 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 you heard of some kind of problems of, of uh, some dodgy dealings, but I don't know, as, as a you real estate it. agent, I, I, uh, I act ethically and I don't really... So you haven't, that was things, my next yeah. question actually, yeah. so you haven't heard of too many scams or issues, I mean... 
from your perspective no, now? I, I heard of uh, them. Yeah, in the past, but yeah. there's been this cleanup. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. But since the notary system is, is kind of really clean yeah. things up and, and so on, because the the notary has some liability, so it's in their um, uh, their own interest to make sure that everything is absolutely tickety boo. Yeah. So uh, tickety boo. I don't know why I said that, <laughs> but. Um, uh, and also another thing that we try and recommend is that um, if there are processes that need to be done uh, for the sale to go through, we always recommend that the, the, the buyer puts the funds into the notary account instead of the seller's account. And then the notary, once she has sight of everything that needs to be kind of done for that property, you know, so maybe some things are contingent on the sale, uh, paying some taxes or bills or so on and so forth, or getting something uh, through inheritance that needs to be done. Once all of those uh, uh, critical things have been done, then she can release the funds. But then, I say she because it's normally a she, uh, but then uh, the, the funds are placed in the notary escrow account, safe and sound until all of these things have been uh, done satisfactorily well I, I'll tell you my experience are good in the and they're not as good um, uh, on the question of the scam I don't know if you call it scam but you know I had the experience of trying to be sold something and and there is a and, and Peter P Peter can explain uh, but we can always do another video about about you know legalizing properties that were already built but this was a property that had tons of issues and the seller was just very pushy to say it's fine it's you know and um, and I've also heard from some people who've contacted out to me of you know some deals where it's it's very low price and you got to get it now and then they start hearing about but you need to wire the money here and so but like anywhere in the world like if you have common sense but I was overall very impressed by if you have trusted people and that's why it's so important to have people that have been here that you can trust but my experience with uh, with the lawyer. Um, was incredible. I mean, and I'll give you one example, mm -hmm. is um, when we bought the property, we weren't sure of the fees that the banks were going to charge and, it, and the exchange rate. So I wired, you know, a tiny bit more. And uh, I remember going to dinner with the lawyer and she comes and she has an envelope. And it, but it look, it was, we looked at it was exactly the amount, but it wasn't. It was 82 euros too much. And here I have dinner with her. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. And she comes, gives me an envelope and says, here's your 82 euros. <laughs> I would have never known, but it just shows, but they were so efficient. I was just the, the notary, the lawyer, etc. So I think if you have a trustworthy, and I've been impressed by the title system, the legal, the legal overall. I, I yeah. just, you know, around the world, there's places I've looked at, you know, Mexico, Peru, where you don't have that, exactly what you said happens. Mm -hmm. Three people can sell, they can sell the plot to three yeah. people. And that's, a, you know, key. And in some places, it's a real problem even today. So I think for me, that's, uh, that's a giant think, reason why I decided to buy here, actually. I remember seeing years ago, so I can't, don't ask me to find it, but uh, uh, something talking about the, the uh, where Montenegro ranks in the world of uh, in land registry, and it was at least a third the way to the top. So it's uh, kind of the, 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 the higher echelon, yeah. Of, yeah, but then you, it's comparing with you know, Austria, London, and yeah. so on and so forth, the very established places. I think because it actually came from that Austro-Hungarian uh, uh, registration, the way of doing things, methodology, uh, they kind of continued that. So they already had a very strong way of doing things. Uh, and like I said, everything's online now, so it's uh, quite, quite easy to, to, uh, to find these things. And then any issues uh, with the property? So for example, if a building is built without a building license, it will say Nema Dosvala. So you'll see that straight away. So it's quite easy to see, and you can actually look at this on, online. Or if there's any debts against the property, you'll be able to see it and, uh, and so on. So, Absolutely. All right, two more questions, and then we're done the seven. The, uh, this I get very offer, often, this question. So can foreigners buy? Can it be done remotely? How does it work? Uh, yes, foreigners can buy, they can buy land as well. Uh, the, the law has changed several times, but it's kind of very well established now. You can buy any property. Montenegro is pro foreign investors. They're the ones who encourage people to, to come here, so they've made it very easy. And they're actually, for example, in the notary, when you look at the contracts, uh, in the, uh, the notary tends to do the, the contract. But they do do the contract because it's their contract. Uh, it's actually more biased towards the buyer than the seller. So it's making sure that the seller guarantees, you know, the, there's no debts, there's no problems, there's no liens, there's no any issues or, or so on. Uh, and uh, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah. Remind me the question? Yeah, it was for foreigners buying. How, foreigners how, how buying. Easy, how so they can buy land up to 5,000 square meters of land. 
Uh, more than that, you need to have a, a, a company. Uh, it's quite easy to set up a company, but there, there are obviously uh, costs involved in, in setting up a company. Um, just one thing about the, buying the land is that it must have some kind of planning status. So it could be in a zone where you can just build something up to a certain percentage, or it has a um, it's an, uh, has an urban plan, yep. or it has some kind of zoning. So as long as it has some kind of zoning, then each buyer, so for example, a couple can buy 10,000 square meters of, of land if they, they wanted to have uh, land. More than that, then you just need a company and the company can uh, be the, the legal entity uh, to buy the land. Now, super clear. And the last question, but ties exactly into this, which I get all the time, it's uh, about uh, permits, residency permits. How does it work? How long can I stay? What happens if I buy? I've heard it makes sense to set up a company. You know, these are all the kind of questions that come through. Right. So, and I know you're not a, a legal advisor, but you know, you, you have a lot of experience here. So. so there's a couple of videos that I've done with uh, immigration experts. Yeah, they're excellent, uh, by the way. I've yeah. watched all so of them. So <laughs> maybe Nathan can put a link in there. So it's, it's quite uh, useful information. They're a little bit old, but so the, but the, most of the information is relevant. Uh, in terms of the residency permits, the main things you need to understand is that you need to uh, own a residential property. So you can't buy land, you can't buy a ruin. It needs to be registered as, as residential. Uh, it doesn't matter if it uh, hasn't been legalized. So you can actually buy something which has this Nemedozvola. So if you find something which is a great price and you want to say, do you know what, this, pr this is price so low and I'll you know, pay the kind of... Uh, 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 taxes in the future, so on and so forth, you might sort of build that and take that into consideration. So you can actually get the residency on that. Uh, you then uh, apply for the residency with the, I think you need to have a proof of non-criminal record, which is very easy. You can just get it from the local police station and uh, get a few things, birth certificate and so on and so forth. Get that sent to the, um, uh, the authorities here and then you can just go through the process. I'd advise that you use a specialist. So in the video we use um, uh, Julie Carragod. Uh, so she's excellent at doing these things. Or oh, there's lots of lawyers, accountants kind of do these things. You normally you pay, I don't know, like 500 euros or something like that for, for somebody to kind of process all, all this kind of thing. So they'll do all the work, all the queuing and so on and so forth and tell you exactly what you need. You know, because you just got to be aware that when you're sending over documents because of the Hague Convention, uh, you've got to make sure that these documents are notarized and apostilled. Uh, in your country. Some countries don't do the apostille, I think it's Canada, don't yeah. do it. So then you, then they have to be certified or something. Yeah. So there, there's ways around it, so you need to know the specifics for your own country. Um, but then, yep, you can get the residency and the residency uh, uh, therefore infers uh, that you're going to live in Montenegro. So that normally implies that you're going to be in Montenegro for 11 months of the year. Uh, but in essence, there's two ways of doing it. One is the residency through owning a property. The other is a residency through having a company. A lot of people try and tell you that uh, having a company is more flexible. It is in some small respects, but in overall, it's the same in as much that with the residency through property or residency through a company, you're allowed up to 10 months in a five year period to, to have off with either way. So in essence, it's the same. So and I hope that's not too complicated. Yeah, no, but it, it's a key one, and, and it's a, the other video. But I do get the question a lot. But so let's say someone buys, builds a house. If on a tourist visa, they can be how long? How long can they come for? Uh, but a lot of people, because they just want to dip in and out of their, their yep. property. So and then you've got the 90 out of 180 day rule. Or it could be quite simple that, you know, if you uh, have multiple homes, I know people actually, they like to kind of live away from their, their home yeah. country if you're American. Maybe they'll have a house in Montenegro, maybe a house in Italy or something like that. And then they can just spend three months here, three months in Italy, and then just go you're from around. one to another. So. so, but, so if I understand correctly, and, and then I can always put more later or some, some, some more details, but mm -hmm. so you could come for 90 days. That's what I understand. Yeah. But if you want to come for longer, then and you want that, you know, the renewal, annual renewal of residency, yeah. you have to be there those ten, those those longer months? Yeah, or? well, no, you can actually uh, keep applying for the uh, annual residency. So you can do that, but basically you're starting from year one. Okay. So if you don't meet the requirement for, you can actually have up to three months off uh, in a year. Uh, but if you don't meet those requirements, then you're just going to start from year one. Okay. The advantage of actually doing it and have this kind of continuous or contiguous kind of uh, uh, annual temporary residency is that after five years, then you can apply for permanent residency. Uh, but if you keep 
breaking it, breaking the cycle, then you're just going to start you from year one, year one, year one, year uh, one, which you can do. Some people do it that way. So, uh, so it just depends on how they want to do it. For a lot of people that are actually buying in Montenegro, it's the plan B property. Yeah. yeah. So they're doing it because also they know it's going to be a good investment. It's the capital gains are going to go, go up. It will rent very well. Uh, as actually, at the moment, for long-term rentals, people are getting really good returns on, on their investment. Wow. So really good for long-term rentals. And as a result of that, some people have switched from Airbnb to long-term rentals. So now there's probably uh, a smaller pool of Airbnb properties. So I think that the, I've, I've actually, uh, we manage a few Airbnb properties and we, we put, put up the prices a couple of times this year already. Right. And we're, we're getting the demand. So I think there's a smaller pool of, of Airbnb properties. So, so either way, you, you're yeah. gonna win. So. And I think, I mean, in my, my cases, the idea is, I think a lot of people will buy it's beautiful. I've been here so many times, love coming back. And there's not many places in the world where I will keep going back to, yeah. right? And I kept coming back. I, I did a video, I came with the kids last summer, spent two weeks in the, August. It was amazing. So check out that video. Uh, but um, so I think, you know, me, I, the idea is buy, come here, mm -hmm. but then maybe one day base myself here. And that's very different, but then you have these options, with the, you know, with the with the permits and setting up a company, et cetera. It's, it's a different setup if you really want to say, I want to move there yeah. and get a residency, or if you're going to be coming in and out throughout the year. Uh, but um, but it's nice to have those options. It's nice, it's so easy for foreigners to buy. I mean, for me, yeah. it, was a, it was a walk in the park. It's very easy, yeah. It, it sets up to be easy for foreigners and, and yeah. so on. So even, for example, even the, the Brits who were part of the European Union, uh, they basically kept it the same. So it's very easy for uh, uh, Brits to come here. That When I say the European Union, because there is an idea that Montenegro could go into the EU, the, there was a date of 2025. Uh, I'm not so confident that it will be 25 now, but it might be by 2028. Uh, that can have a big impact also so, on the market, right? It'll have a huge impact uh, on, the, on the market, uh, especially places like uh, Herzegnovi. So Herzegnovi has lagged behind the rest of this kind of Boko Kotorska area. Simply, like I said before, it's not as well connected um, uh, infrastructure-wise, road-wise and so yeah. on, or, or lifestyle-wise. Border crossing to, to the other Croatia place. can have long lines and yeah. yeah but it, you know, if that, but if, if that, that opens goes, up, then you have Dubrovnik Airport there, exactly, 45 yeah. minutes away. You're almost equidistant from uh, Dubrovnik Airport, uh, Chilipi Airport, and Herzegnovi, then Dubrovnik is. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a great international airport there. You've got Tivat Airport, which flies straight. As you as you land in Tivat, you can see the the iconic red and white crane in Puerto Montenegro and Jetty One, and yeah. then you've got Podgorica Airport, which is yeah, uh, ninety amazing. minutes away. So. Yeah, well, I, I hope you liked it. Thank you so much, Peter. This was great. It's a pleasure. Lots of content. Yeah. Uh, we've been in touch, uh, yeah. you know, and, and Peter keeps me updated on what's happening. So um, thank you for the time. It was a pleasure. pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. Put some comments, ask questions, you know, put it in there. and uh, Like well. and subscribe. Don't forget that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and we'll see you in a future video. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. Thank there you. There you go. <laughs>